Christ saying that. So as these as these angels are pouring out their bowls of wrath, he interjects after the sixth angel, and these demonic spirits are coming out, that he says, look, I come like a thief. As an interjection to urge believers to stay awake, remain clothed, and do not go naked and shamefully exposed. Meaning, do not become spiritually complacent. Be vigilant for his second coming. Okay, that helps a lot. Okay, so then getting back to, then they gathered the kings together to the place in, that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. And there's a superscript there, uh, Q, which references back to Second Kings, which I'll get to. But then if I read through here in Armageddon, it resumes the narration from, from verse 14. Oh, after after Christ's interjection um, recalls uh, Psalms two two Armageddon uh, Mount Megiddo in Hebrew Megiddo also called the Plain of Megiddo um, Second Chronicles was an ancient city that Solomon fortified in 1 Kings, Megiddo was strategically located along the main highway from Egypt to Syria in the Jezreel Valley and was the site of key battles in Judges and Kings. Some read this as a literal reference to the final of the final battle while others interpret Armageddon as a symbol of the final conflict between God and the forces of evil. Hmm. So we're not sure if it's the past or the or the future. In the past, it gets back to the final battle in Judges and Kings. Or looking ahead, that there is a final battle forthcoming between God and the forces of evil. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, then we got in the seventh angel, uh, pour a bowl in the air. Uh, there was a loud voice saying, It's done. Then flashes of lightning, rumbles thunder. So the battle was completed. Islands, flow, islands are gone, mountains are all destroyed, hailstones, 100 pounds falling on the people, they curse God. Okay. Wow. All right, I'm feeling better about that. Um, looking, cheating, looking ahead, because Revelation is a long book. So, um, the final, epi, uh, final um, Revelation chapter is 22, so. We're here on 17. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read through 17. We'll stop at that one. One of the... Se so this is Babylon, the prostitute of the beast. The prostitute on the beast. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls. One of the seven angels. Not sure which one. Who had the seven bowls came and said to me, me being John, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. There, 
I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that is covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten thorns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery. It said, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and the abominations of the earth. Okay, so that's who she is, right? So she is the abominations of the earth. Although she's dressed in purple and scarlet, glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. Okay, and she's sitting on the scarlet beast. Okay. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Then the angel said to me, why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, she ha which has the seven heads and ten thorns. The beast, which you saw, once was, now is not, and yet will come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. The inhabitants of the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world, will be astonished when they see the beast, because it once was, now is not, and yet will come. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. Okay. They are also, there are, they are also seven kings. Okay, so the seven heads are seven hills and seven kings. Five of those kings or hills have fallen. One is, the other has not yet to come. But when he does come, he must remain for only a little while. The beast, who once was and now is not, is an eighth king. The beast is an eighth king. Wow. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. The ten thorns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. They will wage war against the lamb, but the lamb will triumph over them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. So we're in the battle now, right? I mean, it's, it's everything was prophecy. It talks about that we're going to gather all these kings, um, and they're going to fight for the beast, but it's to the beast's destruction. So that's what this prostitute is doing. No, that's what the beast is. So she is on top of the beast. The beast is, has seven heads and ten, thorn, ten horns. That the horns and the heads are representative of the kings and the kingdoms that are coming to battle with the beast. And the beast is being empowered and all of them are heading to their own destruction against when they wage war against the lamb because the lamb will triumph. Then the angel said to me, the waters you saw where the, where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The beasts, the beast, and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. They will bring her to ruin and leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it 
into their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to hand over the beast, no, hand over to the beast their royal authority until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Wow. There is just a lot there. I mean, I thought I had it until that last paragraph. The angel said to me, the waters you, you saw, so she's sitting alongside the waters, they are the peoples, the, multitude, na the multitudes, nations, and languages. They're God's people. The waters of the people. The beast hates the prostitute. They'll bring her to ruin, leave her naked. Da, 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 da. God has put it in their hearts. Their hearts, their hearts, their hearts. Their hearts being the people, the multitude of nations, the people of the water. To hand over the beast, hand over to the beast their royal authority until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over kings of the earth. I don't know if the great city is Babylon or if I, I don't know, let's just go down to the, let's get this on the, on the footnotes. So the waters, the peoples, interprets the symbol in verse 1, like the beast, Babylon exercises authority over unredeemed humanity. Okay. Um, and 16 says, evil will turn against evil as the beast and its ten horns will destroy the prostitute. Yeah, I didn't realize that the prostitute was the evil. I guess, she, well, actually, go back to, remember, she is Babylon. Because that is on her forehead. She is Babylon. She is the abomination of the earth. So she is evil. She is, quote unquote, she is evil itself, right? And then the beast and the ten horns, she sits upon them. And then um, it will turn, the beast turns against her. So evil against evil. So the prostitute, we'll destroy the prostitute in Avalon. The idolatrous, 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 gosh, idolatrous economic system that supports them, meaning the beast and the horns, and whose demise they will mourn. And so yeah, so the world, yeah, so the world and all the kings within it, all of those that aren't um, faithful to God that are so focused on worldly things, the economy, all of the, um, you know, all of the, the evils that exist in the world, uh, the, the, all of that is, um, it, it, it destroys itself, you know, so God's just watching the earth destroy itself, evil against evil. And um, they despise, shameful, expose, and burn Babylon, which also recalls the judgment against apostate e, uh, Israel. Hmm. So the prostitute is Babylon, right? refers to the world's idolatrous, immoral, economic, and cultural system, which Rome embodied for John's first readers. Hmm. So she is, remember, she is, she is the symbol, she represents Babylon. She is the mother of prostitutes. She is the abominations of the earth. She being Babylon sits upon the beast, which the beast is the idol, the symbolic idol of evil. And so they, she happily sits upon all those evils and worships them. 
You know, those are the idols themselves. In the end, what God's saying is, that is your downfall. That is what's going to finish the earth. And he's going to, they are going to wage battle against God's people who are remaining faithful, who will be persecuted. And what he's going to do is bring down God's wrath on the world as it slowly removes itself from worship of God, which we see, right? I mean, we've just seen this over centuries, this just departing from, from God. We question, question the word of God. We, we focus more and more on the pleasures of the earth which are evil in their, in their base. Um, so yeah, so this is what, this is what God is warning us of. Um, what Jesus is warning us of when he says back in 16, I think it was, look, I come like a thief. Which I don't fully understand that part of it. Come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as not to go naked and shamefully exposed. And so he's saying, again, like, stay true because I am coming. The second coming is coming. So stay spiritually vigilant, which that's exactly what's happening in 17 with respect to the entire great city of Babylon has become this prostitute to all of the evils within it and allows itself to succumb to to participating and worshiping those and not worshiping god so um they are no longer clean um it talks about all the impurities and the the evils that come from the beast um and they've adopted that so they even when inevitably God's wrath is going to be put upon them. They still don't repent. Like that's how evil they are. That's how um, unfaithful they are. They curse God even as He's bringing down the wrath upon them. So they've completely turned. Like these, they're you know they're not at all. Um, they don't have any any bit of God in their heart, and uh, there's zero fear of God. Zero. So um, they just curse Him. So God's trying to um, really just try to bring down his wrath on, on earth. Wow. Okay. That was cool. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still confused on the timing of all of this. Because you go back to 14... It really references the symbolic imagery of what happened to the beast when Christ lived in his short life, died, and was resurrected. Now that is what cast the beast to the depths of the abyss. Um, and then four chapters later, he gets into Armageddon, which is which is the future state, um, preparing for the second coming and. Um, bringing down God's wrath. So it's blatant it's like that in Revelation, but we're talking about millenniums of all this happening. But, you know, I guess where I'm, I'm feeling great about right now is just um, understanding like this is, this is where we are departing from God and it's happening in real time. Um, gosh, man, today, October, and second, third of 2020, where we're just tearing each other apart as a country. And, uh, you know, um, there's so much that, well, there's so much need to, um, you know, remain clothed, right? Like Jesus is telling us, there's so much need for that. We are going naked and shamefully exposed, and we are living like um, the prostitute of Babylon um, on the throne of, of uh, 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 on the backs of the beast and all the evils that are there. And um, Yeah, so 
Okay. So, um, you know, Babylon has fallen because the evils have devoured her, right? Um, in, in, in chapter 17. So then chapter 18 gets into the lament uh, over the fallen Babylon. So, um, you know, so the aftermath is what's, what's forthcoming. So um, it's good. So we got through uh, 16 and 17. And um, it's great. Okay. That's it.